we can't have what we all saw happen to George Floyd. We cannot have that again. And, and we have to, we have to get better. We have to get better. Lambert Brown and Marcus Carpenter for joining me to to talk, um, you know, about the uh, situation going on in Minneapolis. George Floyd um, being murdered or killed, whichever you know, whichever nomenclature you want to use by the Minneapolis Police Department. So I just want to ask you guys, you know, your what are your feelings? And, and Lambert, maybe we can start with you, Lambert. What, what are your feelings having you know witnessed the last week? Um, here. Uh, you know, I, I, did, I had a conversation with a couple of people from work too, and, we, and they kind of asked that same question. And I think uh, trying to find words, I feel like sometimes it doesn't give it justice, um, but I'm going to do my best. And I think uh, it, it's been a range of emotion. You know, I think it went from, uh, I won't even, I can't even say shock because I think when I watched it, I, um, I was saddened, uh, you know, kind of heartbroken, saddened for the family. But I, I don't, I don't wouldn't say shock ever set in because, um, unfortunately, that you know, um, it was more like uh, anger, you know. And then, uh, and I think you, you, a mix of, you know, everything from from anger and frustration um, to you know seeing um, no arrests be made to uh, you know kind of like here we go again and almost a feeling of hopelessness for a little bit. Um, and I think kind of, and I think trying to find a way to navigate through all that and, uh, and then be there for other people and, and be there for students and, and be there for friends. And, um, so I think trying to kind of allow myself to say, uh, it's okay to, to feel different ways at different times. Um, and, uh, and so I would say a full range of emotions. Um, like I know a lot of people are feeling. Marcus, how about you? What you've been posting a lot on Facebook, um, you know, admirably in my opinion. Um, you know, t tell me about your feelings and what are some of the messages that you've tried to convey um, as you, yeah. you know, and both you guys are, you know, live in the Wise Out of School District and and work in these areas and and you know what what did what do you what do you have to say, Marcus? Yeah, I, I would I would echo actually a lot of coaches' comments. In terms of uh, the varying emotion, you know, um, it's been kind of all over the map. You know, uh, the the for for me, um, the initial, I guess, watch of the video was extreme anger. You know, it was a, a feeling of, you know, here we go again. And in my thought process, you know, it just kind of brought up a, a lot of uh, feeling of. Um, I guess, uh, anger in terms of what do we need to do and what needs to happen to ensure, I, I immediately went into solution mode. What do we need to do and what needs to happen to ensure that we just don't see this again, you know? And um, I think part of it, you know, uh, part of the anger that played into it was, you know, just from a timing perspective, you know, we're in the middle of, of one of the, the, the toughest times for, for our country. Um, and for the world uh, in terms of what we're dealing with, with, with COVID. And so there's automatically, you know, some ex existing stress that's going on there. And then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to have, uh, to witness what happened was an additional stress. It was additional anger. And I think it was amplified by the fact that, you know, it wasn't, this wasn't the first time that we had seen this in, you know, in the month of May, you know, 30 days ago, we, we found out about, uh, you know, Ahmaud Arbery, and then we found about, out about uh, what happened in Louisville with Breonna Taylor, and, 
and then uh, now with with George Floyd, and it hit home from a local perspective. So, you know, a lot of anger, a lot of um, sadness, uh, but yet and still a lot of hope too. I mean, I want to make sure that we 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 talk about that today because I believe, you know, as a community, there's an opportunity for us to really come together and, and uh, um, communicate. And, and uh, there's an opportunity for a lot of understanding to take place. What needs to change um, at, Minneapolis, at Minneapolis PD and police departments around the, around the nation? What, how, does, how does this get better? Yeah. That's a, Marcus, you want to go first? You want me to take it? <laughs> sure. 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 Um, I'll take a stab. Yeah, go for it. I'll, I'll take a stab at that one. I mean, I think... <clears throat> I think ultimately what, what needs to happen is uh, always, you know, in athletics, um, we all know that, that communication is key. Communication is key to winning. Uh, you have to all be on the same page. And I think um, just like in athletics with a police department or a military unit or, or whatever, um, you know, you get folks from various different backgrounds and they come together. And the number one thing is that we all have to be on the same page and we all have to know what the goal is. And I believe with an understanding, uh, a focus on cultural training, you know, you, you have a lot of officers that <clears throat> come from areas that are, are uh, you know, predominantly Caucasian areas who never have to deal with anyone of, of color. And all of a sudden, you know, they're being asked to police a whole community of people that they've never interacted with and they've just never talked to. So, so they're being put in these situations where they have to do all of those things that keep our police officers. I mean, we have some great officers, right? But, you know, they got to be able to read body language. They got to be able to read those cues that they need to survive. And I think there's a, a, an opportunity to really spend some time with the folks that are policing. So I would say the number one piece is, is in embracing uh, and a policy change in regards to cultural training. Cultural training. Okay, great. Uh, uh, let me pivot. Let me pivot, guys, um, if I could, to the protests and the riots. Um, and, and I think there's, and you guys tell me, but I think there's been a, you know, kind of a distinction made between some of the peaceful protests and some of the rioting. What's your what's your reaction, or what's what are your feelings and thoughts about um, the protesting? And we, we, you know, we've had our fourth night of basically Minneapolis burning. Um, maybe you guys could comment on on what what you think and what 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 would you tell to what would you tell citizens and stakeholders and you know teammates and students you know in our community what what should they be thinking and feeling about what's happening uh, in Minneapolis now? Yeah. Well, uh, so, so I, I would say, Dan, the, the, the very first thing that I would say is, is no matter what, at the end of the, the day, if there's one thing that's to be heard loud and clear, it's that destruction and violence is never the answer. It's never going to be a solution that is going to work long term. That's, that's the number, number one thing. Moving beyond that, I would say when we look at what's going on in our city, you really have to look at it from two different lenses. There is the lens of uh, the, the uh, protesters. So the people who truly want to come out and express how they feel, you know, um, they, they want to come out and they want to have their voice heard. And I think one of the things that uh, <clears throat> when you look at, uh, you know, traditionally communities that haven't had that opportunity, um, to vent and to, uh, to, to let their voices be heard, oftentimes, you know, they, they're not, once those voices do get an opportunity to be heard, they don't, they, they're not heard in the traditional ways that we're used to, you know? And that's why you do see some of the, the uproar and the anger. Um, but once again, that doesn't justify the, the destruction of the violence. But then, so that's the one lens, is the peaceful protest, the people that are, are truly upset. But then you look at the other lens, and this is the lens where we need to make sure that it doesn't get confused. You know, there's, uh, there's people that are coming into our community 
that they just want to see the chaos. They just want to see the destruction. They, they're, they're uh, you know, what I call the wing nuts, you know, they're, whether it's the right wing or the left wing, you know, there's these people that just want to cause chaos in our community. And, um, you know, that we can't, we just can't have that. We, we can't tolerate that. And we need to make sure that there's that distinction that happens. So um, there's, there was a long time in our country where rioting was a sense of making sure that your voice was heard. And unfortunately that was 60 years ago and we're still having the same discussion. And I think that's the part where we need to amplify our communication um, and, and really, uh, you know, we, we, need the, we need folks who are within the power structure to understand that we can't have this excessive force and, and folks being brutally, you know, brutally lynched and murdered in our streets. We just, we have to move beyond that as a country. You know, yeah. Lambert, any any thoughts from you or? Yeah, I got cut off for a minute, uh, but I got back on. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, I think uh, my feelings, I guess, have, have evolved and they continue to change as this whole thing continues to change. You know, I think, uh, um, I think no matter what, when you protest, people are going to be upset, right? And and that's the point of a protest to create some some discomfort for people and to draw awareness. And so I think, uh, you know, I am all for, have been for the peaceful protests. Um, and, you know, I would say even that first night, um, you know, as I saw things move from, um, from peaceful protests into anger and to, into, you know, destruction of property, I, I, I would not condone it. Um, don't think it's right, but I could say that I understood how some people felt where I, you know, if you feel unheard and you still feel on, you know, and, and you're still feeling like your voice isn't being heard, I can see how um, that, that rage can boil over. I watched last night and felt completely the opposite way. I felt like there was people who were there to peaceful protest. And then there's also people then, you know, like I think he said it really well. There was, there was people there just to see destruction and not to be a part of solutions. And I think, um, you know, if that, that I feel like that's, that's where things are, are moving and, and um, it doesn't, it doesn't allow progress to happen because we're, we're stuck in, we're stuck in trying to, um, I think people who are trying to bring about, change and social justice and and be up and be a part of solutions to problems are quite literally spending time cleaning up mm-hmm. other people's messes right now um and and i so i think uh you know the getting that right um viewpoint of the fact that yeah there's there's lots of different ways to see this and and, and things may change. I, I retweeted uh, or put out uh, a message. I had a, a former player of mine who was down leading a peaceful protest last night, and I was as proud as could be of him mm-hmm. and, and the way that he was conducting himself and the way that he was keeping people from engaging in anything and, and quite literally was saying, you know, if somebody was going to break off, he's saying, you cannot join those looters. You need to walk with us, and we're going to keep moving. And I was incredibly proud of him and how he was conducting himself and, um, you know, in, in, in one hand, I'm, I'm really proud of him and what he was doing. And then as I'm watching the video and seeing what else is going on, um, heartbroken and, and saddened by the things that are happening from other people, if that makes sense. And so um, probably leads to a lot of that range of emotion, but also knowing that I think, and I think um, a lot of that came out today and, and has been coming up more and more. People don't, people don't um, say, hey, this is the corner store that I go to, and I know this person really well, and I'm going to burn it down. That does not happen. Um, and people don't say, hey, you know what, I've, I've got to I've gotta get my medicine from this Walgreens, and this is where I go all the time. Let me burn that down. Um, I think people come from other places and say, I have no connection here, and I have an opportunity, and I think that's where we're seeing that in, in – incredible um force right now and and i'm hoping and, and and praying that we can get that under control so that we can get to um the real issues and the things that we need to, to really put our focus on um you know which is allow people to grieve 
and, uh, and allow us to find some ways to move forward and to say, how, what are some solutions um, and, and hopefully bring um, light to the fact that like, you know, there's, there's a, I think multiple experiences that people have in the United States. And I think one thing that I've noticed on this is I think there's a lot of uh, people who realize that the black experience is very different. Um, it is very different. And, um, you know, I, I went to pick up my son from his friend's house last night. It was 11 o'clock. He decided not to do a sleepover and I was, um, driver's license out, um, yeah. registration out and nervous the entire time, the entire time. Um, that is reality. Um, and that's my reality. Anytime I drive at night, it just is. And, and so, um, mm. I think people, I think that there's, it's, if anything comes out of this, if, if it's a chance to, to open up conversation and to open up people's hearts and see that, um, you know, the reaction is, is different. Um, I think partly because you we have different experiences. Um, and I think just, and, and I think being open to understanding that and people being open to having that conversation and, and, and I think curiosity, um, can really help a lot of things. Just being like, you know, hey, t- tell me about this and creating a conversation and not being afraid to have it um, and, and, and coming from the right heart space um, can really do a lot. And so um, I think I've, I've had quite a few of those conversations um, lately and, and, and have had those conversations with my children. You know, we sat around the table today and had a long conversation. It's tough. Um, but I think um, – there has been a long, um, we've, I would say, I'm trying to find the right wording for this, but I'd say that there, there has been a, a luxury provided that, that I think um, the black community hasn't had. I, I can remember my dad talking to me about what it means to be a black man in America. I can, I can think about me talking to my son about these things. Um, I don't know if there's a lot, uh, there's not a lot of, you know, Caucasian males who can say, I can remember my dad talking about what it means to be a white man in America. There's, I think there's a different way you navigate. Um, and that conversation is, is, is not only one that I think most of the, the black males that I know and, and my friends, that when we talk about it, they can kind of point to some of those conversations and some of the lessons that they've learned. And, and it's not necessarily about how to, hey, how to navigate and, and, Hey, like you do these things and, and you're going to leave generation and walk through It is, this is what you, this is how you navigate so that you stay alive. Yes. And, and, and that is a, a reality that I think needs to be known. Mm-hmm. You know, it, I think it, 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 uh, yeah. 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 Man, I, I got, I just, I got to jump in and then add to what coach was saying. It's like, I, I think what will help us when you talk about Dan, what will help, our community and what will help our police departments and what will help everybody else. It's being able to have that experience of what it's like, you know? And so, you know, a a very brief little bit about my background. You know, I was one of six black kids in my whole school, you know, played at the university of Wisconsin was a small minority of, of not only black students, but students of color period on campus. And now here in Minnesota, you know, I am literally, uh, one of the only black people within a couple of miles of my home. And in my corporate day, I am the only black person in my company. So it's like having that experience of what that feels like. I think uh, if someone really wants to see why, you know, if someone, if someone really wants to connect with the experience of why people are so upset they need to have that experience. And so what I always suggest to my friends is, is say, hey, if you want to feel what it, see what it feels like to walk in my shoes, go somewhere where you're the only person that looks like you. And obviously you want to, you know, I, I always recommend a, a black church or, or something like that, but you'll get an opportunity to feel, you know, what it's like when you walk in that room and within a matter of milliseconds, if you've been doing it long enough, Within a matter of milliseconds, you're, you're looking around. Who's going to be my ally? Who, is, who might potentially have a, an issue with mm-hmm. being a minority? Who can I count on if, if, if something, if I was to feel unsafe, who's going to step up for me? Who, who might be uh, the person that I feel 
going to stick up for me, but really, really won't. So these are all these different things that you think about as and coach mentioned it being in the car, you know, late at night. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I, um, you know, I have my, I have my license. I have my, my insurance card there. You know, when I get where, you know, it's immediately do not move, keep my hands at 10 and two, um, you know, be the officer, you know, do whatever I can do to make sure that I am safe and I can come home to my wife and, and my three daughters is what we think about, you know? And so mm-hmm. we'll need to have that experience. Well, I appreciate both of you guys sharing that. Um, let me let me pivot just a just a second uh, to Colin Kaepernick, and you know both of you guys have a football background, um, and you know there's a lot of commentary, and people have you know mixed emotions about Colin Kaepernick and kneeling during you know the national anthem and that kind of stuff. But you know one of the things that I have seen and and really took to heart um, f- from my perspective is that there is not that there and you guys can maybe weigh in on this, but when is the appropriate time to um, have the conversation? And, and, you know, when we don't listen to, and you guys tell me, but, you know, when we don't listen to what somebody is saying in a peaceful manner, then maybe sometimes it it erupts and boils into this other scenario. And you guys comment more than, more than I, I would, if you would. Uh, I'll I'll jump into that one, coach. Uh, Yes. So, so I would say with, with Colin, um, you know, there, there's, there's an opportunity to, there, there was an opportunity um, to do exactly what the world was asking for. And that's to, to do, uh, to participate in a peaceful protest. And, and we live in the greatest country on the planet. And so we, ha- we all have the first amendment right to, to say and uh, how we feel and be who we are and that those are the those are the things that we enjoy as Americans and it was an opportunity for the entire world when Colin Kaepernick when he when he made a stance to, to have a peaceful protest in terms of bringing light to what was going on in communities across the country and um, it was an opportunity to say hey these are the things that that young black men and, and people of color are going through. Um, and he tried to cast a light on that, but instead he was called unpatriotic. He was called a spoiled brat, you know, um, members of our leadership called him an SOB, you know, you know, it was, he was totally, uh, you know, kind of, I feel like um, condemned for just trying to bring light to a situation. And it was, it was, one of those things where I think people are looking back on it now and they are having um, probably some remorse about how they for trying to be a leader. For trying to be a leader. So it's about what I- you got it. You got it. You got it. Um, yeah, you know, I think I, I agree with all that. And I think, you know, you, you think about the fact that, you know, all, all the, you know, we talk about protests creating uh, discomfort, right? And I think, you know, um, you look at what Colin, Colin Kaepernick and, and that you can't do any more than, than say, hey, you know what? I think when that started, he, you know, decided to sit down. You know, told hey, that's not unpatriotic. Sat down with a Navy SEAL and said, "Hey, tell me how to do this." Hey, you know, we take a knee, doing this, and then goes and does that, and specifically says, "This is not about my that I don't love the United States. So this is not about the fact that I don't respect our military. And in fact, so much I'm taking my cue from them, from you know, one of the greatest you know, a uh, military person in the most elite forces in the in the world, and saying, "Hey, this is where I'm taking my cue from." And at some point, you know, I, I, it doesn't really matter what to say. People are going to think it's not good enough, which is which is why you create a, a protest, why you do a peaceful protest. I think um, the irony of the whole thing, if you could even put it as, as you know, um, I think if maybe we had all taken some time to listen to that, we might not be where we are right now. Mm-hmm. Um, because this is exactly what he's protesting and exactly what he's trying to bring light to. And instead of saying, hey, this is the issue and let's try to solve an issue, um, we're worried about, hey, this is how you're doing it. And sometimes um, we got to figure out those uh, issues and, and find a way to create solutions. Um, 
you know, and, and um, you know, I, I, my mind keeps wrapping back to this and in, in all these situations is um, there is a, we have a great lack of empathy with a lot of people right now and, and, and without empathy, it's hard to get, um, it's hard to put yourself in, you can't put yourself in other people's shoes and you can't see things the other way. And, you, and not only I will take the time to hear that and to learn and to grow and, and we stay stuck. And so, um, I just, that, that word empathy just keeps coming in my mind and just, um, what, what that, what that means. Yep. I think I think you're on mute, Dan. Thank you're on mute, Dan. Thanks. Thanks, Marcus. Thanks, Thanks Lambert. Marcus. Thanks, any, Lambert. Any, any uh, parting any, uh, parting, uh, parting uh, comments or parting shot? Uh, comments or shot? So if you get, you get the final word, I'll, I'll go now. And you get go now. Um, you know, right. I think uh, right. so. So. Marcus, go ahead. Okay. Marcus, go ahead. So I, I would just say, from a from a from a final comment standpoint, I mean, it's it's really, you know, if there was if there was uh, if there was two things that if there was anything that I can encourage that people would do, would be number one, it would be just simply to to continue to talk to each other. I mean, we we gotta continue to communicate, and you know what, um, you know. I'll, I don't know how we do this, but find someone that you can trust that, you know, if you have questions about how people are feeling or about a different culture or, 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 or anything that, that um, you're curious about, I would encourage people, let's, you know, find someone that you can trust, you can talk to and talk to them. Cause that's the only way that we're going to get past where we are today is, is being together, walking in love, um, finding a sense of understanding and, and communicating. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful for our future. I know we can get past this. You know, I'll say it again. Uh, you know, I, I love our community. I love the state that we live in. I absolutely love our country. Um, but we got to, we, we can't have what we all saw happen to George Floyd. We cannot have that again. And, and we have to, we have to get better. We have to get better. Very well said, Marcus. That was a was really good. I got to follow that. <laughs> I think, uh, uh, coach, come on, man. You got to bring it, man. Yeah, I got it. Um, you know, I agree with that. You said that really well. Uh, you, we we live in a in a great country. Um, you know, I, I was just talking to my kids about the fact that you know we're how lucky we are. Here. We're we're in a great community with a ton of support. Um, you know, why is that is a great place to live, you know, and, and we're in a great school system where they're going to get a great education. Um, you know, we were, we are, you know, uh, very lucky and, and, uh, think and to kind of be grateful for what we have but, and strive for that for, for everybody. I think, um, I'm in agreement. I'm incredibly hopeful Have, having conversations with our students and to see, um, the consciousness of, of, um, racial justice and social justice and and being good people first and foremost right of our students um, has has given me hope that that you know this this next generation that is coming um, is was willing to take things further and to say you know we want to do what's right and and, um, and so I, I'm incredibly hopeful that we're going to keep moving forward I'm incredibly hopeful that uh, at the end of the day um, that we will see justice in, in this case will allow, which will allow us to move forward and say, what can we do in future cases and how can we keep this from happening again? Um, and I don't, cause I don't want to see, uh, uh, you know, uh, this and we're, we're, you know, there's not justice and we're back here. And so, um, just to, yeah, incredibly hopeful, um, you know, and excited to have, you know, more conversations with people. I think, like I said, I think uh, being able to just talk and to learn and to be open for that and to and to be vulnerable, right? It's vulnerable and tough um, to say, "Hey, I have a question on this," and, and be so vulnerable, be in the right heart space, in the right place, to, and, to, and somebody that you trust that you can have that conversation with. Um, and 
in more so more than anything probably know you know being able to say hey this is what i don't know and being okay with that saying hey, i don't know this but i'm willing to go learn mm -hmm. um and then and, and practice and, you know tremendous um you know love and grace and empathy for other people um is really what, what it's all about mm -hmm. Well, let me express my gratitude again for um, both of you joining me. And um, I would just encourage you know, more conversations and you know, immediately stay home tonight. You know, curfew, curfew basically across the metro um, for the next couple of nights, 8 o'clock. Everybody stay home. It's the way the riots will stop. So, thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Lambert. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.